What's up guys, Patrick here, tour guide and your guide to Barcelona. Today we're gonna to be walking around in another neighborhood in the old part of the city. We're in the Barrio of San Pera, the neighborhood of San Pera right here. You guys can see behind me, we've got the Via Layetana, which means the Gothic Quarter is just this way. And we're gonna be heading in to this part, which is just above that Bourne that we visited as well. If you haven't checked out that video already, make sure you do. But we're gonna check out another little spot that maybe you don't get to as much, but has a lot to discover. So let's check it out. And so like I said, this is on the opposite side of the street from that Gothic quarter. So it is one of the older parts of the city that was incorporated in after they expanded those walls. And the Bourne would be down closer to the actual, um, to the sea. And this area, kind of all of them known as more of like La Ribera. This is known as San Pera for a church that we'll see a little bit later. What you have here is a bunch of different things. I'm gonna take you around that if you're visiting, you definitely should check out. We'll get to it in just a minute, but you've got the Palau de la Musica, Music Palace right here. I'm gonna show you down this street Right across from the palace, we've got a couple places that I always recommend. One is El Bicho right there, which is a nice little wine bar. And then there is an awesome cafe, little bar, open area, open air, which is called the Old Theater. Let's see if we can get in today. It is a little bit early. So it's closed right now. But you can see old theater right there and it's got this big open patio that's really nice to sit down have a coffee have a beer but we're gonna head over to the music palace we can check that out then if you're in Barcelona this is definitely one of the things that I would recommend doing checking out that Palau de la Musica and not only going inside they do do guided tours pretty much every day you just look at the different times if you want them in Spanish Catalan or English, but they also have concerts as well, all sorts of different concerts. There's some flamenco concerts and uh, all types of different things you should definitely get to, but it's one of the most popular buildings made by Domenechi Muntané, who if you've seen some of the other modernist videos, we've talked about a little bit, done some buildings over on the Paseo de Gracia, one of the most famous modernist architects. We get out to the front. It is kind of right in these smaller streets. So it's harder to see, but you can see right there. Hopefully it's a good angle for you. But you can see the building, which is spectacular. Built and finished up about 1908. And it even won building, the best building in the, in the city for that year. And what you can see at the very front is St. George. You have St. George up on the top. You've got a lot of different Catalan motifs but you've got St. George up on the top and then kind of all of those townspeople as well. You can even see the cross of St. George just under. All these different sculptures that are in there. You've also got the brick and then all of the ceramic that we'll get close to right here. And that idea of modernism with that nature. You've got all the different flowers, which is very similar to the Casa Yeo Moreira on the Paseo de Gracia, which is the same architect. But you can see that along the columns down here. The interior, you've got all sorts of different glass, stained glass, beautiful, beautiful in there. See again, these ideas of the columns. And then they've got the ticket booths right here. These are the older ticket booths where you would have gotten those entrances to come in. And you can see them left over just on each side. The main ticket office now is around the corner in the back, and that's usually where you'll, you're en you'll enter. You can kind of see in to the interior, but like I said, I always recommend people to come over and get an idea of, of a concert. There is uh, a little bit more we can see in through here, but there is a picture of what it looks like in the interior and it's kind of made as this like bowl almost in between everything and you can see the idea of even the stained glass that'll be on the top and everything all of the different 
uh, sculptures and all of that different decoration. It makes it like a really, really nice place to go and check out a concert. Like I said, it's hard to see everything from these small, small streets, but you get an idea. And even up in those balconies, if you're ever on Instagram, that's one of the popular places to get pictures. You'll always see some of those big popular pictures with amongst those columns. So you can check that out as well. But if you are here just off of the main road, Via Layatana, you've got Palau de la Musica. Give you another view of it from here. You get that idea. And as we continue on through, we're going to be walking on San Pera Mas Alt. All right, so this is the higher road. And there is, just parallel to it, there is another road, which is Masbaix, which is the, the lower road as well. And so what we're going to see, just kind of look at the streets as we're coming through, passing a school right now. But what this neighborhood is really famous for, once they started opening up and we get into more of the 18th century, you get a lot of what they would call casa fabricas. Now, when we're in Barcelona, we always talk about this idea of the Revolve being the place where they put all the factories. But if you look at older maps, you actually get a lot of buildings that are put in over here. And this is when everybody's kind of starting to go over to that new world and to those colonies. And they're creating these different, these different factories. So that casa fabrica is a house factory. And that's what it was called back in the day. But you have some just like this, doesn't look too impressive, any of these buildings. You've just got the different floors, but very similar to those houses that we'll even see on Passage de Gracia, you do notice that the main floor, that noble floor, is the bigger one. And that's where the owners of those factories would actually have their residence. And the higher you get up, you start to get those smaller floors, and that's where they might have had the workers. Now in the back, what you'll have is what would have been the part of the factory where they were working with all the different cotton or any of those kind of textiles that were so popular. And so different houses all around the area, like number 17, we just passed, are kind of left over where we can see that, that idea. But we'll see some of some different ones as we, as we walk through. You'll also notice a lot of different shops around here. While this is super, super centric, and very local, very, very center to the city. Um, it is a very popular local place as well. So you do get a lot of residents in this area. Here's another idea of one of those casa fabricas we were talking about, which is a little bit more decorated. You can see that idea. A little bit more decorated, but again, usually you can see that idea of these main doors where they could get all of the product, the cargo and everything in. And then up to those floors above the noble floor that are going to be a little bit, a little bit smaller. You can kind of hear it's much more quiet over here right now. Not just next door vegetarians, vegans that are coming over. One place that I always recommend right here is Flax and Kale. This is the second location that they opened up. There is one over in the Raval as well. This is a good spot if you're looking for any of those vegetarian, vegan. You can even have raw vegan plates in there as well. So when people ask about those recommendations, you have that option. And you can, what's really cool is you can see all these kind of older buildings. One of the places that I love to just walk through it is rather beautiful even coming up we'll see all the different balconies with all the the plants on them one option is the trafalgar space right here and if you come over we've got all sorts of different exhibits that come on through right now we've got the world of banksy which was supposed to close last year but i think they've opened it up to the rest of 2021 so if you guys get over here and you're looking to see a little bit of that idea of street art which has become so popular over here you've got the world of banksy just right here at the Trafalgar space. You can check that out. And right now, what we're doing is we're coming up on, I'm just gonna turn around so you guys can see. But right here is what I was talking about with all of those balconies. 
covered with those plants. You'll see it as we're walking through. You'll see it come in into the background. There's also these cool little passageways that go through that are going to connect us out to other sections of the city. And there's some nice bars, some nice little cafes right on the inside of there. You go through, you get into more of that Eschampla area, start to walk out of the old city. And then all these kind of smaller streets, if you go straight down, you get to San Pedro Mesbash, which is that parallel street we were talking about before. But like I was saying before, this is one of the areas that was added in in those Middle Ages when they expanded outside of the original Roman walls that are over here. That when you're in that Gothic quarter, you can see. And then as they started to expand, this was one of those first areas that was, that was added in. What we're going to see in a minute here is one of the churches. It kind of gives this whole area its name, the Church of San Pedro. And Pera in Spanish would be Pedro, or in English it would be Peter. But like I said, imagine that this was outside of those old city walls for many, many years. It wasn't going to be until the 1200s when those second walls were added in. So all of this would have been outside of that old Barcelona. Roman Barcelona, Visigothic Barcelona. And then even when the Muslims had taken over in this area. Got another street right out here that's going to lead up into more of that Eschampla. But one place that I always like to come over to, and it's always nice to walk around, is the Plaza de San Pedro, or the Plaza of San Pedro. And you can see now the church that we were talking about. Full name is San Pedro de las Puellas, or las Puellas, and you can see what's left of it. Now, it's originally it dates back to like 945, so we're talking a 10th century church, but it's a nice one to go into. There's not much left of it. It was a monastery. It did take up some more space, and one of the things very similar to that Raval area because this was a place where there were those factories where there was a little bit more uh, of that space before. When they put in a lot of different churches, a lot of those have been converted into other, other areas today, thinking that Barcelona was very populated with different monasteries, different convents. And this one would have been a bit bigger as well. But now you've got a little bit of some overtones and different styles within it. So it would have originally been that 10th century. That's more of that Romanesque. You've got the Gothic door that's on it right now. And in the, on the weekends, this is a really nice plaza where you've got some locals hanging out over here. You've got some nice bars in aparte over there, which is nice. The fountain, always a good one. I don't know, I always just like coming over here, but it's a nice little little plaza, a nice peaceful place to walk through that you can see. If you're, you know, just walking without any, uh, without any end in sight, right? You kind of get around, see a little bit more of Barcelona, just so you know where we are. You're just a couple blocks away from the Arc de Triomphe. So you've got that over there. Another place that you usually want to go over and see, the Park of the Citadella, is right here as well. So this is kind of an area, more maybe transit, as you'll see people walking through, going to work right now. But it is a really cool place to check out, and I always love that plaza. You can see the bell tower that's left in the church. There were two originally. They say there's only one left right now for you. We're gonna keep heading down and get into a little bit more of the populated area. We're gonna cross through the street, which is San Pedro Mesbaix, that lower street, which will lead us back to the Via Laetana. And then you can even see in the back there, like I said, the Arc de Triomphe. It's just right there, you can see it. So it's not too far at all, but we're gonna hop down this street and get into another little plaza. That's nice to come in, sit down, grab a drink as well.
And if you have been over here, let me know with a comment below because I always feel like this is a place that not as many people come over to. We know the Gothic Quarter, the Cathedral, La Rambla, obviously. And then, as I said, the, the park, the Ark, is over on the other side. And maybe here, we don't spend as much time. The Bourne, obviously, a lot of people like to go through. Those are some of the more popular places. Maybe this doesn't have as many of the big, big monuments. But you kind of walk through all these different little streets to get to all those other places. And these areas, obviously a little bit newer. It's kind of like a stark contrast between some of those older buildings that we had seen and some of these newer apartment blocks that have popped up. Kind of even seeing with the idea of those, of those stones in the building there. But here we are coming up to San Agustin Bay. So the old St. Augustine. And this is a plaza that I was saying. And you're walking through. It's definitely a nice spot, spot to get through. You've got San Agustina, a little restaurant over here that usually will have this place, this little plaza taken with some, with some tables. And you can see one place that I would definitely recommend if you're coming through is Joanette and they do some really nice lunch menus. You can see they're opening up for us right now. Place for a little breakfast. Imagine this plaza, very quiet, sitting out having a nice little coffee, a croissant, something like that right here. But like I said, they do have really nice lunch menus. So if you want to get those three course meals for about 12 euros here, it's always a really, really nice spot. And you've got the fountain very similar to the Canaletas Fountain on La Rambla. Just a really peaceful, really, really peaceful area. Now the name, and we'll jump down into this next street here as well, but the name is actually going to come from another convent that had been here, San Agustin. Now that was built in those Middle Ages as well. What's left of it is used for different events. I know there's been some kind of beer festivals here in the past, maybe some little concerts and things, but it's really turned into this like civic center. And this is kind of what's left of the cloister right in here, but it's a big open space that you can see some of the walls left, but a lot of it's been turned into, like I said, that civic center. Now, it was built up in, that, in those Middle Ages, after that War of Spanish Succession, the beginning of the 1700s, it was taken down, a lot of it was destroyed, and believe it or not, part of it was moved over to the Raval. So if you go over to the Raval, there is another church now, which is called San Agustin, and it's from what was left after the bombardments, it's what's left over there. Now it wasn't completely finished, and if you go over to the Raval, you can actually see some of the stone, and then like halfway through, it just changes completely and looks very, very different. And people always kind of ask why or wonder why. Now you know. So we have another street here, which is Cardes, which has a bunch of different bars, restaurants, and everything. Ina's that we're just passing now is always a nice one. And this street right here is one that I always like if you're looking to just kind of find a more quiet spot. We're not going to go down all the way, but I will show you a little bit more on the way through. There is a kids park, but if you go further down, and now we're getting closer to Princesa and to that Bourne, you've got a lot of different restaurants where you can just kind of chill out, sit down, have a drink, and it is really quiet. In the summer, these trees are going to start to fill up, and it looks really, really nice. So it's one of those peaceful little places that you can come over to. And we're going to continue on down the street, which I, years ago, used to live with some, with some buddies, so I know the place relatively well. It's been a while since I've lived here. I'll show you where that old apartment is, because obviously that's even more important than all these historical buildings.
But when you get into this area, you've got a lot of different options. Coffee Casa right here. There's some really nice brews, some nice blends. You can check that out if you're looking for a very specific type of coffee. This plaza I've always enjoyed. We used to have the Al Sur Cafe right there, which had a lot of different tables. There are a couple bars over here as well, but I've always just really liked this plaza. Kind of older, almost more of like a hidden plaza as well. The name's not too bad, San Cugat. But what I really like in cities is kind of that old and the new. So you can even see just these older walls that appear in the back, which I think are super cool. You can come down through here. And then what's left of some of these side streets are some of those older arches that are connecting the houses that really just created some more space back when these singular houses became multifamily houses as well. And so what I'm speaking about are these that you see that give that old feel as well. But all these little arches, we can walk in right here, which is really nice. Talked about one of these in another video I did out of Barcelona in Aragon, in a place called Alquezar, which they call them castizos. And they basically just, like I said before, they extend those houses which are really nice. It is earlier in the morning today, so that's why a lot of these shops are closed. They're not gonna open up until a little bit later. But you have these smaller side streets, and we're coming up to now, I'll show you my old apartment. Shout out to Corey Jose and Michael and Nick, some old roommates. It's actually right on this corner. And that first balcony here, we had an apartment years ago. Very different times. Now you guys know one of my old, one of my old apartments. And you have Santa Catarina Pharmacy right here. We're now getting into more of this area known for the market that's going to be just on the other side, Santa Catarina. And you have a chapel, Den Marcus, that's right here, which is not open a lot, but there are some masses on the weekends you can see, but this is always a nice little surprise when you see these older chapels that just pop up amongst this old city. So if you ever do see it open, Maybe you have that opportunity to get in. I think it'd be pretty cool. I've been in there very, very few times. And so we're gonna cut down the street and get over to, like I said, the market that's here that a lot of people hear about. The Boqueria in the Raval, just on the Rambla, is the most famous of markets in Barcelona. The biggest in Spain, but the Santa Catarina gets a lot of publicity, gets a lot of love as well. And you'll recognize it from basically its very, very famous roof. You can see from here just the curve in the roof. It was redone and it's very, very colorful. It's beautiful. But just like that Boqueria, you can see, they've even put it right here, that used to be a convent. And so you can see kind of the idea of what it used to look like. They give you a little bit of some history here as well but they actually have an area that you can go in and see some of the excavations that they made. This is the early 2000s when they were doing a lot of this and remodeling everything. But if you ever see aerial pictures, the roof is beautiful. If you ever get a view from the balconies, it's really nice as well. But if you come close over here, you can actually go in on the side a little bit later and there's what's left and explains a little bit more of the, of the history. And what we're going to do is jump on in to the market so you can see a little bit of it. Everybody always likes a good, a good market. 
And if you are over here, this is one place that I always recommend when we're over in the Bourne. If you're looking for a good lunch menu spot, Bar Juan just on the inside, here in the back of the market, really, really good spot. Super cheap lunch menu. Again, those three course meals are going to be awesome. So you can check those out. Here's the bar. You can see we're in the market right now. But you can see Bar Juan just back here. Now what we'll do is we'll walk through a little bit so you can get an idea of the market itself. I always like this one because it's more local. The Bocaria has become really, really popular for all tourists and everybody goes over. As you can see the Bar Juan in the back, which again, if you're over here, definitely want to go over to. And you've got all of these different stalls and we're early enough to where you can see a lot of the food that's here. So you've got the fish market right here in the back. And then all sorts of different, different places. You've got your meats and then even our, our produce as well. Now there are some restaurants in the front that you can check out as well that we'll pass by in just a minute here. I wanna give you guys an idea of what's going on in the market. You can see it's pretty empty, but again, tourism's not here right now. There usually are more people, but again, much less than the Bocaria. So you can really get through a lot easier. Try out your different things and you're good to go. We've got one of the bars just right out here. And if we head out to the front, kind of like the main entrances, what you'll have on the outside you can see L'Universe, the Universe bar, and then La Torna that we just came out of right there. But you get that idea of the restaurants, and this is a place where you can come sit down, have some tapas, and enjoy all of that. But always a nice spot, and again, a lot less busy than maybe the Bocaria. And again, you can see the idea, I'm trying to get across the street here, you can see the idea of that roof. Again, from here, you can't see too much of the colors, but you get a little bit of an idea of the green right there. You can look up these on Google Images and always get a nice idea for what it does look like. A little bit harder to see with the sun coming in right there, but a really, really nice roof. And a lot of people always ask, hey, what is that? Where, how do we get over there? And they don't know that it's a market. So the Santa Catarina market, always a really nice one. Within that, you've seen a lot of the area, so hopefully you have a better idea of a new place that you can come to if you're walking through, get a little bit more of an idea of what's going on here in the San Pedra, Santa Catarina markets and, uh, well, San Pedra, San Catarina neighborhoods more than anything. And just so you know where we are, right in front of the Santa Catarina market, behind me, you're looking out towards the plaza of the cathedral, so you can see very, very center. Just walk across the street and you're over in this area. Great places for lunch. A lot of history in here, but we might not know it as much. Kind of just pops up inside of that old part of the city. So guys, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Leave a comment below if you've been over here and what was your favorite part. I'd love to hear back from you there. If you haven't done so already, remember that you can subscribe so you'll always know when all these videos are coming out, you'll never miss one of them. You get better prepared for your next trip to Barcelona or just keep you connected after you leave. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.